Uh, hello, everybody. As I've already introduced, my name is Andrew Neal. I'm a cloud consultant at Mobilize, and I'm one of the ones who specializes in cloud security and DevSecOps. So let's get into this. So what we're going to be talking about today is building DevSecOps into your pipelines. What that's mainly going to boil down to is we're going to see how you put security into those CI CD pipelines, whether you've already built them intend or intend to build them or wh whichever stage of your journey or DevOps journey you are. This is going to be trying to give you an idea of where you need to go, what you need to do to add that security into your dev your DevSecOps journey. So let's move on. So first thing I want to get out there and dispel is this DevOps versus DevSecOps. Journey. There's a big myth out there that it's going to be like a versus world. There's actually a blog post about this I wrote last year as well on the uh, Mobilize blog. So go read that as well. Um, but it's, it's not on the verses at the end of the day. It is more about that DevOps is becoming DevSecOps, or you could say security will become the norm in DevOps, and it just will stay DevOps, and security will be at every stage. But it's less synonymous with each other. There's no, you shouldn't be worried about, oh, we do DevOps, we do DevSecOps, we don't need to do DevOps, because it's a different type of mentality. It's very much the same mentality. Um, so what we want to do is, Show you how to embrace that security as part of your DevOps journey. So let's get into it. So here's like additional like little infinity DevOps. Right um, as we go through, you see you start, you've got your plan, and as you can see your security embraces everyone. So you start your plan, you can see it's embracing it, it's around it. You see your code, it is around it. You see your building, the security is around it. You can see every, it's the whole thing. So when you're doing your planning, you're going, ah. Oh, Maybe I should uh, plan some security in there. Maybe I should start planning with the security team. And you plan your security into your pipeline. And as you're coding, you should secure to a secure standard. Have your developers maybe have, take some security training on best practices or have a security consultant work alongside them, something like that. Or There's various different ways you can do that. And then you build it. You build it securely, adding security in there. So like some testing on the vulnerabilities of your code. Um, I'll go into all these different things I'm talking about now later as well, so don't worry about it. Um, testing, then you'd like to do some security testing, and then you get to release, well then you test the release as well. You need to deploy it, you to deploy it into a secure environment. And in operations, you've got like checking, you've got security scanning constantly going on, and monitoring, you've got your SIAM tools, constantly monitoring those type of things. So as you can see, security is every step of your journey in the DevSec world. And then, so, it's like we're working together. You're all with one big team, really, now, rather than just being a dev versus ops and sex. So this is it's all big one collective process. So this was what a normal, it's, these are very lightweight um, architectures. We're not, we're not going, it's, it's a start for 10, if you would. So this is like the top one is more your CI, CD pipeline for traditional EC2 deployments. I will be referring to most of in AWS terminology because that's generally where I'm more comfortable, but a lot of this will apply to Azure and GCP as well. But so the top one is your CI CD pipeline for traditional EC2 deployments. Say it's your monolithic web app that is built onto a single instance and you bake it into an AMI, which is like an image, which then you deploy that image into your infrastructure and then you'd serve up the content. And the secondary pipeline um, is a containerized pipeline, which is becoming more commonplace these days, or popularity with Kubernetes, as we well know. Um, so this is more for like your microservices and stuff like that. So I'll refer to, as, as I go through, I'll be referring back to these pipelines a little bit here and there. So I'll refer to top one as monolith, and the bottom up one as containerized. So as we know with the normal DevOps, it's all about speed, getting your code up, tested, and in production as quickly as possible, but without breaking stuff. It allows you to be in a tier, deliver quickly, and it makes it rapid, so you can increase frequency releases. So you've got like a really you can have to do like a release a day, every hour, whichever one suits your business needs, and increases the reliability. So you've got confidence in the building deployments because they're always going through the same process. So the top one would be like going through a developer goes puts their code in, and he's got like a pipeline in Jenkins that has a hook for on push or merge into master, whichever one suits you, and it gets builds repository, 
and then it creates an AMI with that code in, the app run in, and then it deploys that AMI as an EC2 deployment into your environment. And then the bottom one I'm done is same again, value for doing the code, merges it in, and then you've got something like drone. Drone will then create a um, image and store it in your wherever your private registry is for your, say, your Docker images. And then you go to the pot and spinnaker that look for them and then deploy into your Kubernetes engine. Uh, other or other container orchestration platforms are available, but as we all know, Kubernetes has kind of won that war. So moving on to adding some security into those pipelines. So let's add a little of that dash of security into that pipeline. I wish it was that easy, admittedly, just there, but it, it is not that easy. So let's just move on. So this is what a DevSecOps architecture will be. This is what happens if you added security into those pipelines we saw earlier. As you can see, there's a little bit of change. Go back. A little bit of quick change, not much, because we're only adding it lightweight here. We're not going too in-depth, because it can be quite in-depth adding security into your pipelines. There are many tools available, and you can do it every stage, and then it's however your business plan goes for adding security in. So let's break this down. So you've got your CLC DRM position EC2 deployments, the monolithic web app one we were talking about earlier. But now we've got a bit more extra security on it. We've got first is um, SonarCube, which is a, um, we'll, I'll break it down what it is later on, but it's essentially a vulnerability scanner for your code. It's a static testing tool. So that would be constantly scanning your code for on, whether it be on commits or merges to master, whichever one you set that up as. And that would be looking for vulnerabilities in the code and reporting out to developers that they've added vulnerabilities or there might be vulnerabilities in the code base they need to be aware of and to fix. And that prevents then you from deploying these vulnerabilities into your production environment because you've seen them early on in the pipeline and can make amends to fix it or go and pushing it up. So that'd be like step one in this little nice little pipeline. So it's going along, updating your developers constantly on their code changes, seeing value vulnerabilities or even removing them so they can see if they're improving on their system. The next one is a service called AWS Inspector that inspects um, AMIs for vulnerabilities on like packages, and misconfigurations on the AMI and those types of and the packages and internals like Linux internals and stuff like that. And that would be then popular. So when you're in the next part of, say, the infrastructure as code, um, when the AMI is being built, the AWS is going to say report, actually, you've added these vulnerabilities in by adding these packages, or you've opened this up, and then they can be remediated, once again, before going into deployment. All these tools are basically helping you get towards fixing everything before you get to deployment. So those two, it's just a start of 10 tools. It's good, they're just nice simple ones you can probably get in. I want to say simple, they're quite, can be quite complicated, but good start is you can get added into your pipelines. And then you've got more faith that your EC2 deployment is more secure. You know, you can't be worried about so many vulnerabilities. You know, you've dealt with them at earlier stages rather than have somebody give a report that actually your production's got vulnerabilities on. You've caught them before they get there. So let's look at our microservices containerized pipeline. So you've got your Developer doing his norms, and then once again, Sony Cube's in there. Generally, having a static security testing tool is a very good idea because if you catch vulnerabilities super early on, then you don't have to worry about further down in the pipeline having to take many more steps back. So, the change, there's a small change here. You also go to Drone IO, but then instead of going to a normal, any old private registry, this is one, this is a, this is a image registry that we personally use and mobilize. It's called Harbor. It is a image repo that um, has vulnerability scanning on it. Um, so when a new image or an updated image is pushed into Harbor, then it will be scanned for vulnerabilities on the packages and on each layer of the Docker image. So the image then you have a report on, oh, this image has these vulnerabilities, maybe we need to fix it, or don't push that image to production because that's too many vulnerabilities. And it gives you a better control over which images are in your production. So then Spinnaker can pick up whichever correctly tagged one you want. So you could have, let's say, a tag that would only be attached to any ones with no critical security vulnerabilities. And then you push that into Kubernetes. And once again, you'd have faith that you'd have a lot less or none, preferably none, vulnerabilities in that 
cluster and saying for your easy movement, you'd have like faith that it's a lot more secure, you have no security vulnerabilities, you can sleep better at night. So let's break this down a bit more. So it's still it's still rapid because it increases the frequency of your secure testing to make you sure you catch those vulnerabilities sooner. Like I say catch them sooner is better than catching them fraud. So it's still rapid. I must say though, it's gonna be a little bit slower because obviously you're adding more steps in. So it will be a little bit slower, but we're not talking like days and hours. It's not minutes maybe. And, but then you can go, you can have different levels of security testing as well. So you can have like hours worth, but that's, that's a conversation for later on in the uh, presentation. So it's also increases that reliability. So increases the confidence in your builds and deployments, having those fewer security vendors or hopefully none. So if anyone's aware of the um, CIA model for security, confidentiality, integrity, availability, this helps you especially go towards more integrity, confidentiality, and availability in your apps because less security vulnerabilities are going to be, have high availability because less chance of being taken down or broken into, taken from various attacks. Um, more integrity because you know that you've got less vulnerabilities in there, like none. And more confidence in your things because you're secure tested, you're happy with it, you are aware of what has gone on. So, moving on from our little mini DevSecOps architecture. So, let's talk about AppSec or application security. Um, it is super important, obviously. This is where a lot of your security in the pipelines will come from, is your application security. Um, there's a great quote from uh, Tanya Jay. She's the CEO of Security Guy Kick and a uh, DevOps, DevSecOps evangelist. Um, it's any and every activity that you perform to ensure your software is secure. And it's pretty much true. Um, because anything, as you see earlier, when we're doing these, when we go back here, so we're going to testing the code, doing AWS Inspector, doing putting in Harbor, any, all those were testing the code at all the time. And they're pretty much, any test, even the unit test, you could say, helps get you towards being insecure. So it's literally any test. Every test will get you towards that secure platform you want to be at. So I want to put out there, this is um, from the um, bank report in 2017, that bad app set causes around 40% of security breaches. That's quite a lot. If you think about how many security breaches are out here, I haven't got that figure off the top of my head. It is quite a large figure. Um, but it's around 40%. You could say then with a 6 could be infrastructure. Um, Security breaches, but mm, that figure isn't 100% out there, and you can say so, so there's a lot of other factors out there, but it's, it's a, when you think about it, it's quite a high number, 40%, generally. So you don't want those 40% of breaches to happen to you, even 1%, even 0.1% of breaches. So what do we do with application security? Is we test, and then we test again, and then we keep on testing for these vulnerabilities and security holes in our application. We don't stop testing. This is what the pipelines will enable you to do. Having those security tools in your pipeline and will give you a chance to keep testing at each stage. And you could have your own security testing stage, in fact, in the pipeline. So you keep testing it and testing and testing until you are happy that you have minimized your attack platform by having much less vulnerabilities open to the world on your application. So as, as I said here, a vulnerable application is a dangerous application, not only to you, you your companies and your business, but also to your users and your reputation. It's, it's, it's bad from end to end, especially if you start introducing critical vulnerabilities or even high vulnerabilities into the system. It's not good for business, especially if you end up being one of those people who gets breached. So next one I want to point out with AppSec as well is invest time and money into application security. Now, whether this may be like training your developers and your operations team and your DevOps pipeline, who look after your DevOps pipeline and doing the code in, um, doing lots of security methodologies, best practices, or even how to use the tooling. It's a good place to invest. So that's obviously time and money. Don't, take time, don't just like jump in two feet. You kind of need to understand what you're doing. Um, or give a consultancy a ring or reach out to them and get someone to come in and evaluate where your holes might be and what you need to do to get a move along on that security journey. Either way, I think it's best to invest time and a lot. A good amount of time, definitely, and some money. But you have to earn a lot of money because there is some open source tools out there as well. So and once you've invested that time and money, you can automate it because then you know how the tools work. So you're thinking, how can I automate this? How can I put it into a pipeline? How can I take away this manual step that I'm doing? And then everything's automated, hunky-dory. It's your friend. 
you can sit back and watch your pipeline run successfully all the way along, maybe to production or maybe to your stage, whichever way you've got your stop is. And you can say, right, I'll just watch that go through and be confident what's happening. So let's move on. Infrastructure security or infrasec. It is just as important as AppSec. Some people say more important, some people say less important. It depends on where you stand on that argument, but we're not going to, that's, that's another conversation. Very much another time. So I think everyone's aware of some of the biggest breaches that have happened in the cloud. But like I say, to give an example is um, Equifax leaking all the credit information of all Americans. That was simply down to a misconfiguration of cloud resources. And um, that could have been easily prevented if they were using security tools or, and had braced that security into their DevOps pipeline. Um, because just because you think, oh, AppSec, I've got my tools for AppSec scanning my code, you've got infrastructure as code now. You've got infrastructure tooling. Both of them are now just as equal as each other. So you want to be that company that goes, everyone goes, oh, look, that's the company over there that left the pub pub public book open. And look, I just do with Equifax. They have to open, you want to be that people refer to everyone using a bad example. You want to be secure. So, how do you get some infrasec into your pipelines? Well, generally, you'd use, you can use static code analysis for infrastructure as code. So, like Sonar Cube, stuff like that. But also, there's plenty of infrastructure scanning tools out there that just focus on the infrastructure, which you can put into your pipeline. So, when you do a deployment of your infrastructure, your infrastructure code's gone long, deployed all your infrastructure quickly into the cloud, you're happy, like oh, that's quick, it's great. So, but then you kick off a security testing section then after that, once everything's reporting is healthy, and then you test all your infrastructure to see if there's anything misconfigured, see if there's any access that shouldn't be public or there's something that shouldn't be in a public subnet or there might be a misconfiguration, that type. So if you've got too large of a port range or your IP ranges are too large, those type of simple, I say simple, but those type of issues that could arise. And also want to set point out as well. If you're going to do the security scanning, don't just do it in say a test environment. That's nothing like life. So you've got a test environment that quickly you need to quickly pump the apps into for testing purposes. Not normally too good of idea to do the security testing there because if it's not exactly like live, you might have false positives. Like oh, this needs to be secure, this needs to be secure, then it gets prod. You've done something different to prod and then they could clash. So you want to test really something that's very production-like. So you get the right type of results and you can fix the type right of issues. You don't want to be, let's like, say, coin clashes and potentially breaking something in the production environment and then you've got a complete outage of your service because you tightened one security service a bit too much. So let's go back a bit and go back into application security testing because that is a lot of the meat and bones, really, of your thing. And, um, and this just applies to infrastructure security. So you've got dynamic application security testing called DAST. You'll see that quite a lot in different other articles out there and whatnot. You want to use the dynamic application security against running applications. So you've deployed, you've got going along your pipeline, passed everything else, and it's deployed into that staging environment. That's where you start running your applicate your security applications against your live, well, not live, but going to be live soon application. And that'll help find security vulnerabilities and weaknesses in them from the packages and you'll go through login and then test the flows and it'll, that those tools are can be also fully automated but they'll go through and test as much as they can trying to find vulnerabilities in your app whether it's talking to the database or whether it's just how it handles data if it's storing it right or tls is on those type of stuff and then the next type of application security testing is sast static and if you go back, if you can remember the monolithic and containerized diagrams from earlier, um, static was the sonar cube um, tool in that pipeline. Basically, um, that will that's used for assessing code, whether it's your infrastructure code or your application code, whichever level of code you've stored in your repos. And then that'll help developers find vulnerabilities in their source code. Um, pretty much. In terms of, I said they're both equally important, but you definitely want to start with doing a SAST first before you jump to DAST, because DAST will then find all the same vulnerabilities below in SAST, but then you could send you further back in the pipeline, because obviously you're deployed at this point, so you want to do your SAST first, get those issues scanned, 
found and go to the developers before you end up going to the staging and then okay I have to warn you back further now just helps you speed up your pipeline and your deployments to production the next one isn't quite as common yet um, it's interactive application security testing it does a bit of both it does a bit of dynamic and static um, it is a little bit more manual in how the tools work for that um, and it can be a little bit more complicated to set up because you're trying to juggle both on maybe sometimes on the same tool and then it can be a bit more fiddly currently we um only do dynamic and static at mobilize we are starting to look into doing interactive in our pipelines in places but we're currently fully static and dynamic in our security testing of our pot in our pipeline so it, it's worth evaluating each one for yourself whichever one suits your business practices and that so forth so here's a security pipeline from a thousand feet if you would so to get your design your code your building your testing your releasing and your deploying and we'll say that deploys also doing staging and production um so the first thing you're going to do here in your design is sit down with your security analyst or whoever you're going to be assigning to work on the security piece it may not be a security analyst or somebody with security background whoever it is sit down with them and build a test plan how are you going to be testing all this how would you normally test your code? How would you normally test each and every step in the pipeline? Because if you don't have an effective plan in place, then how will the pipeline be effective? You can end up with bottlenecks, stop starts. It, it might just not work out. It might end up slowing you down severely or even fully on breaking your pipeline. It's best to get that design right. Obviously, you can. A bit of trial error. It's not too bad. But try and generally get most of the points down, your objectives, what you're trying to achieve, what you're trying to test. Try and get that done from the get-go. Um, obviously, next you're coding, and then you're coding away, doing your code, and then build it. And that's what you're doing your SAS, because you're building the code, and then something like SonarCube is testing the code for vulnerabilities. So then you can go back to the next stage. Okay, we need to go back to the code stage because we found like 27 criticals, or whatever it may be. Hopefully, you haven't got 27 criticals in your... Uh, pipeline because maybe then you might need to do some more security training um then you go to test if it passes all that with minor vulnerabilities or none and then we do in your dast and amongst other testing so user testing or whatever type of testing you've got you've got your dynamic testing and that's hitting your application however you set it up whether it be a single test or multiple tests in different parts of it so it's doing lots of different tests and then that could fail and then go back all the way to code and go, right, we've got these one bits, we can't go live with this. So the, the, the issue I'm trying to, the issue what I'm trying to get here is, as I keep saying, is go back. Don't be afraid to go back to previous steps in the pipeline. Don't think, oh, well, I've got a critical, we, need, we always make sure we need to get to critical. It doesn't matter when you get, it's critical that we get to production. Go, okay, well, it doesn't really matter. Let's keep going. No, you want to stop, you want to go back to the design or the code step. Keep going back. That until you get a place where you want to be with that, or hopefully with very little low vulnerabilities so maybe some mediums who knows whatever your case or none preferably so then you've got this is just security pipeline so let's talk about some tools for these pipelines because there is many tools out there it's a it's a booming market currently for security tools and there's many different types out there quite quite a few of these have either a fully open source or have open source variations or what they call community editions which are free to a certain extent. Um, when you're going, when you're assessing these tools yourself, it's best to have a look at the, what your paid version gives you versus the free version. Um, you might not be able to achieve all your objectives.